This morning in class, we were analyzing some of our recent data that we collected in lab on the um, statistical evaluation of acid-base indicators. So this morning, we um, calculated some average molarities based on all of your results. And then we did a t-test to compare two of those molarities. Down here, we compared the mean molarity for uh, bromothymol blue and the mean molarity for methyl orange. And um, we determined from an F test that F calc was bigger than F table. And so in fact, the two standard deviations or two variances were not equal to each other. They were from different distributions. And so we needed to use a special kind of t-test. And you'll remember that we had to go through a fairly involved calculation to calculate both the t-calculated value and in particular the degrees of freedom so that we could look up a value off of the t-table. And we found that um, our t-calculated value of 2.2 is greater than the table value of 2.042, implying that there is a significant difference between these two molarities. And you were probably thinking to yourself as we went through all these calculations, holy crap, there must be an easier way. Well, in fact, Excel has built in some useful tools because t-tests are such popular uh, statistical tools that um, we're gonna use some of those. So I'm gonna show you in the rest of the video how to use Excel's built-in functions to calculate t-tests. So we're gonna use it on our data that we've collected here. All right, let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have the analysis tool pack installed into Excel. You can check that by going up here to the data tab and then you should see somewhere over here something that says Data Analysis Tool Pack. If that is not there, then you're going to need to tell Excel to install that. It's an optional package, but it's included with all versions of Excel. So here is how to do that. Go to the File menu, pull that down. Then over here on the left-hand side, under Options, click Options. It brings up this screen. And one of the things that we want to select down here on the left-hand side is Add-ins. Select add-ins. It lists all the kinds of add-ins that you can include. And so there's some down here that are inactive and some that are active. So in order to change that, go to Manage, select add-ins from the drop-down menu, and click Go. This will bring up the uh, tool packs that you want to install. So we want the analysis tool pack, so click that. Um, then there's another tool that we will be using later in the class. So you might as well go ahead and add that so it's in. And that's Excel's Solver. So if you click on Solver, it will add that in as well. And click on OK. Now if you go back to the Data tab, you should see that there's an entry for Data Analysis. All right, so let's do that now that it's installed. We're going to click Data Analysis. And it brings up a window with all of the various data analysis packages that are included. Things like ANOVAs, histograms, covariances, descriptive statistics, all sorts of useful things. There's even an F-test that we could use. Um, you can look up videos on that if you'd like to learn how to use the F-test. But we're going to be doing t-tests. And so down here there are t-tests. And there are several of them. Paired two sample for means, paired uh, two sample assuming equal variances, and two sample assuming unequal variances. So we're going to be using mostly in this course these two. So these are the two that are useful in quantitative chemical analysis. So this first one we use if the two standard deviations from the data sets that we're looking at are essentially are come from the same distribution. So if they pass the F test and they are similar, then we're going to use this one. So this is like the first set of equations that we learned for the case two T tests. If the variances or the standard deviations are not the same, oh, by the way, just as a reminder, this term variance right here, variance is just the square of the standard deviation. So if the variances are unequal, that means that the standard deviations are unequal. So if your F test says that they are not the same, this is the T test that we're going to have to use. So if you'll remember from our data, we were looking at the mean molarity down here of 0.98 and comparing that to the mean molarity of 0.96. And our F calc suggests was bigger than F table. So that suggests that the two variances are unequal. So we're going to use this one for our t-test. So we're going to click on OK. Then it brings up this cell range. And um, so I've already done this once. So I had some numbers here. Yours will start off blank. So all of these will be blank to start off with. And so let's go and fill them in. So variable one range. So this is data set number one. So we want to tell Excel where that data is. 
So if you click on that little button next to the data tab, it will bring up this window and it's asking you to go and select cells. So I'm going to select all of these cells right here that contain the data that we want and click on OK here. Variable 2 range, so variable 2 is going to be our methyl orange data, so you see right here our methyl orange data. So we're going to click on, uh oh, I think I just messed that up. So yeah, let's go ahead and delete that and reselect that because I messed that up. Sorry about that. So we're going to reselect this set of data. All the bromethymol blue data. There we go. Now we can go down here. We want to select variable 2. That's our methyl orange data. And so that's right here, just these three pieces of data. And then you can click on this button next to where you've entered the cell range, and it will take you back to the original dialog box. Then it says our hypothesized mean difference. So this is going to be what we call the null hypothesis. So we are going to assume first that there is no difference, zero difference between these two means. Even though that they're different numbers, we're going to assume initially, hey, these two guys are in fact statistically significantly the same, you know. All right, then we need to have a value for alpha. Alpha is our probability. So this is the probability that uh, the two means are um, the same. And um, so we want that to be, f we're going to be doing this at the 95% confidence level that they're different. And so we're going to have our hypothesis level at 5%, so 0 0.05. So we're going to use 0 0.05. And that's pretty standard in most of science, 95% confidence level with an alpha value of 0 0.05. OK, and then we're going to click OK and um, see what Excel does. Uh-oh. Excel says, t-test, two sample assuming unequal variances, input range must be a single row or column. Oh, that's sad. You see, we entered our data like this as a whole block of data. And Excel's uh, t-test doesn't know how to handle that. OK, so we have to cancel out of this and go in and fix this. So I knew that was going to happen, so I just wanted to show you what we do. All right, so now we're going to go in and we need to um, make all of this data into one column or one row. So the easiest, well, there, there may be a function in Excel, but I was not able to find one that will do that for you automatically. Um, somebody might post that in the comments if you discover that. But what I'm going to do is just copy this data, paste it down below, and then we're going to make a single column of data. So I've copied it. No, I haven't. So I'm going to select it. I had selected it. Then I'm going to do a control C to copy the data. So I'm going to leave the original data where it was. And down here, I'm going to paste it. All right, so here's our data now pasted. And I'm going to make a new column for um, average for BB molarity. There we go. And then I'm just going to cut and paste each column of this data. So I'm going to select this data. And then I'm going to cut that. So you can go up to the menu to uh, do the uh, cutting and pasting. Or um, what I'm going to do is just use the shortcut key, which on a PC is Control X. So if you hit the Control while holding down the Control key, you hit X. Control X, then it will cut that. And then I select this cell and Control V, and it will paste that. So I do that with each set of data. Control X, Control V to paste, Control X, Control V and so on. So you may notice that there's some gaps in our data, but that's OK. Excel will ignore um, cells that have nothing entered into them. So it will leave that data out and simply use all the remaining numbers. OK, so now we've got all that arranged into a single column of data. And so we're ready to go back and um, calculate our t-test. All right, so back to data analysis. We're going to do the uh, same sample. So most everything is the same. It still has our old block selected, so I'm just going to change that. So I'm going to click on that, and we're going to go down and select all of this data. So just click and drag to select the data. When you're done, click this little button to the right of the um, cell entry. That takes you back here. OK, so now we're ready to um, go. We need to select where it's going to put the output. So um, let's see. Here's where we did our t-test, where we entered all the formulas. So let's just enter it down here below so that we can compare it. Type it right there. Click OK. Now we're ready to click OK, and Excel should spit out data. Here we go. So here we've got our data. Um, it looks like that there's some um, words in here that we can't quite read all of. So I'm just going to go up here and expand this column. Click and drag. Click on the column border and drag so that we can see all of the words that are in that 
column. Okay, so it gives us some summary statistics for variable one. So this is data set one, the bromethon all blue. This is variable two. So it gives us the means and uh, standard deviation, the means and the variances, which is the square of the standard deviations. We'd already calculated the means up here, so they should agree. 0.098102, yeah, that's the same as that number, 0 0.098102, good. And uh, the number of observations, 34. Yeah, there were 34 of these and only three of the methyl oranges, so those agreed. This is our hypothesized mean difference. Here's our degrees of freedom. Now, you'll remember we had to calculate that with a big complicated formula. And note that the formula value that we got from our initial t-test is the same as the degrees of freedom that Excel has calculated. The t-statistic, 2.206 agrees with the value of t-calc that we calculated before, 2.206. So there's the t-calculated value. Excel has given that to you. Now then these next numbers are, um, we're going to have to talk about those a little bit. So here's data for what it's called one-tail distributions. So we are always in this class, in quantitative analysis, interested in two-tail distributions because our data can be either greater than or less than the mean values. So we will ignore the difference between one-tail and two-tail. We're just going to focus on the two-tail. If you want to know more about the distinction, you can go and read about that or uh, Google it. So we're going to be looking at these two numbers. So first off, this bottom number that I just highlighted, that's the t-critical for the two-tail value. So that's the value that we would read off the t-table. So I got the t-table. I estimated it off our t-table as 2.042. But when calculated more precisely with these values, because I had to, we didn't have a, a 27 value on our table, so I had to estimate that. Anyway, so when calculated more precisely, our critical two-tail value is 2.05, all right, instead of the 2.04, but they're pretty close. And in any case, what we can see is that our t-statistic, 2.2, is greater than our t-table. So t-calculated, our t-stat, is greater than our t-critical off the critical table. So when that is true, we conclude, as we did before, that there is a significant difference between um, these two means. Let's talk about this other value right here, this p-value. So this is the probability. So this is the probability that the uh, two means are, in fact, the same. So we hypothesized a mean difference of 0. So this is the probability that that is true. So what is that probability? It's 0.036, or 3.6%. So there's a 3.6% chance that these two means are actually identical to within experimental error. But that chance is not very good, and it's below our cutoff of 5%. So we're at the 95% confidence level. We want to be 95% certain. So um, that 5%, we're going to leave that out. So that means that there is a good chance, right, 97% chance, that these two mean values up here, this one and this one, are in fact different. So that's how we use Excel to do a t-test. If you had had equal variances, then you would have done exactly the same procedure, except under data analysis, you would have selected this t-test, two samples assuming equal variances. So if that's the case, you can use this t-test, and it will spit out that t-test result at a place in your table. So that's how we can use Excel to automate, make easier the um, t-test for our quantitative analysis data. So good luck, and let me know if you have any questions.